Now, May is historically the peak for severe weather season. Atmospheric conditions, they you know, come together, they create a recipe for tornadoes. And it's already been an active severe weather season, almost 600 tornado reports since January. But there's a tremendous variability from year to year. So just calling this an above average season does not necessarily explain the situation, nor does it predict what will happen next. Earlier, I spoke with Bill Bunting from the Storm Prediction Center. Take a listen. Bill, as you look at this season so far since January 1, really, we got to go back that far to the start of the year. What really stands out to you about how active it's been? Well, it's been it's been uh, amazing. Honestly, I've been doing this for a long time and actually go back beyond the first of the year, even Thanksgiving. Uh, very active. A number of high end events, um, unfortunately, uh, a substantial loss of life. And, and further to complicate things, we're just entering the peak of our severe weather season. So as we move deeper into May, early June, this is really the time where everyone needs to be uh, most alert, most ready, um, and have that severe weather plan ready to put into action. And today is unfortunately another one of those days. One of the things you just mentioned there, I don't want to gloss over it because it's an important point. It has been a tragic year. We're, we are going on the above average for tragic tornado deaths. Is that because we've had more night events? We've had more night severe weather outbreaks? What do you attribute to that? Well, some of that is just, um, honestly, it's, it's luck. Good for some, not good for others. Um, you can have intense tornado outbreaks, and if they're over rural areas, it's mainly of interest to, to meteorologists and, and the folks who study them. Uh, put them in populated areas, and especially vulnerable population areas, like at night, where it's harder to receive warnings, and the outcome can be drastically different. And unfortunately, this year, not only have we seen a large number of tornadoes, but, but many of them have traveled through uh, higher population areas, and the results have been and what we've seen, 63 deaths and, and, and a number of casualties. When we look at the numbers for Illinois, they lead the pack with the number of tornadoes, 86. Any particular reason why Illinois has been so active? There have been a couple of events that stand out this year. I think one of them was March 31st, which in, ends up being the third most active tornado day in modern American history uh, in that area from Illinois eastward through Indiana and then down through uh, parts of the, the middle of Tennessee Valley. Um, it's just the pattern this year has favored that area, but not exclusively. You know, unfortunately, parts of the southeast have also seen repeat episodes of severe weather. So there's a element almost of capriciousness. Mm -hmm. um, the atmosphere can focus on one area one year, another area uh, the next. Yeah, and you're exactly right. It has spread the wealth. We're at 24 states now with at least one tornado uh, so far this year. The hail reports have just been jaw-dropping. More than 1,000 reports of hail in the month of April. Not just hail, though. It's been the size. We had that monster grapefruit size hail in, in Texas. Do you think the storms today are going to be capable of large hail? And especially over southwest Texas, really what we look for is the combination of instability uh, and steep lapse rates in the mid-levels uh, between roughly 10 and 20,000 feet. Uh, those conditions are in place today, especially over that part of Texas. And so I would not be surprised to see uh, hail in excess of baseball size uh, again today in that area. Bill, this week has been a little bit of an anomaly. We've had the Omega block, you know, in place. But long term, what are the models suggesting in the weeks ahead for severe weather? Well, we are in the short term, we are going to go back into a more active pattern with southwesterly flow aloft. It won't be as strong as we've seen earlier this year, uh, but it will be sufficient to produce a severe storm risk. After that, things may get quiet for a few days, but there are suggestions in the longer range guidance, especially as we get into very late May and early June, the pattern becomes more favorable again. So uh, this is, uh, again, the peak of the season, and we'll be watching all these conditions closely and really important for folks to stay tuned to the forecast. Speaking of important, a lot of work to be done for today. We'll be paying attention. Bill Bunting from the Storm Prediction Center. Thanks for being with us on Fox Weather. Thank you. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.